Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. How is everybody? Good. Hey, I'm Joel. I'm a teaching guy around here, and I'm going to wrap up our series today called Elephant in the Family Room. Today, we're going to be talking about communication, but I'm going to come at it from an angle that I hope maybe you've never heard it from this way before, and I'm going to tell you this. If you can internalize and practice what we're going to talk about today, it could literally revolutionize your relationships. And I don't say that lightly. I'm serious about this. So one quick promo. Next week, we're starting a new series. Uh, As you guys, some of you all know, a few few years ago, I did a series here. um, Got turned into a book called Connecting the Dots. The book will be available on March 14th. And so we're doing a revamp of that series. We'll be starting next week. I'll be up for the next few weeks, so you'll be seeing my face up here for the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a series called Connecting the Dots, What God is Doing When Life Doesn't Make Sense. And and my question for you in the the series is this, based on this idea, what if everything that has happened to you in your life has prepared you for your greatest days? So it'll be a great series to bring, maybe cash in all your people capital with, all that money you've been, not money, but you know, the, the relational capital and be like, hey, come to church with me. Invite some friends to come to church. It'll be a really great series for that. So let's talk about communication. I, uh, right after I graduated college, I did a backpacking trip by myself through Australia and New Zealand. It's just me in a backpack. I stayed at youth hostels all over the place, not the kind where they saw you, uh, you know, cut you apart. And anyway, you ever seen those movie, that movie Hostel? I haven't seen it, but I, I can't watch that. But anyway, so I stayed at these safe youth hostels. Uh, but I'll, I'll never forget, I checked into this one youth hostel in a town called Queenstown, beautiful part of New Zealand, and there's this cute little Kiwi girl. Kiwis are what they call people from New Zealand. Cute little New Zealander girl um, checking, me into the, checking me into the youth hostel, and she goes, do you want sex in the room? I'm like, I'm like checking the sign. Did I come into the right place? Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I was like, what is she, I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand what you said. And she's like, I said, do you want sex in the room? And I was like, uh, uh, I'm a Christian. Like, I don't just go running around hostile to hostile. And she, I was like, I'm really sorry. I know you said it twice, but what did you say? And she goes, do you want a room for sex? And I was like, what in the world is she talking about? I'm like, did I come into the wrong building? Like, I, Finally, I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. And she goes, do you want sex people or eight people in the room? I was like, let's go with eight just to be safe, right? <laughs> But I'll never forget that conversation because we were both speaking English. But I really misread things. And she thought I was a lunatic. She's like, I've told you. And I, I learned in, in New Zealand, they say the I as an E and the E as an I. So we sound weird to them. But I, I started thinking, you know, you know, George Bernard Shaw, he said this. I love this quote. He said, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. <laughs> You ever been in a conversation where you go, man, that went really good. You like articulate what's going on and, and then you walk away and the person goes and does the total opposite of what you guys just talked about. And you're going, what the, like, did, what conversation were you part of? Did you not hear what I had to say? In fact, I know this about everybody in here. Every one of you, you've got somebody in your life. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your son, your daughter. Maybe it's your spouse. And you would say this to them. Look, I just can't get them to understand. I can't get my boss to understand that when he gives us this much work on this short of a deadline, what he's going to get is a junk product. I just, it doesn't work that way, man. Like, I can't get him to understand. You know, and maybe you're a boss saying, I can't get my employees to understand that I need you to step up and take some authority in some areas, right? Maybe you, with your spouse, you're saying, man, I just can't get him to understand that when he stays at work that long, the kids start missing him and it says bad things for the family. Or maybe you're talking to your wife about, I just can't get her to understand this or whatever it is. We've all got a relationship in our life that when we try and communicate, we feel like they just don't understand. Maybe every time you get in a phone call with your son, it turns into a shouting match. And you go, doesn't he understand I love him? I can't get him to understand I love him. All he hears is disapproval. 
So we're all speaking this same language. We've all got maybe the best of intentions. But in the middle of that, there's this illusion communication has taken place. But then when we see the results of it, we go, what in the world just happened? How, 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 did, like, how was I unable to communicate? And here's where I think the mistake happens. I think for most of us, we think communication is talking. But communication goes two ways. Communication is speaking, but it's also listening. There's a verse in James. James, he throws out this really potent, super short verse. We're going to spend the whole sermon working on this verse where he says this. He says, brothers and sisters, that's all of us. You're a brother, you're a sister, all of us in here. Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, I'm a a professional counselor, and I've learned a lot of people don't like to acknowledge their anger. So they call it, if you don't like this word, you're like, well, I don't get angry. We'll just say frustrated. Fill it in frustrated here. (laughs) I don't get angry. I just get frustrated. Yeah, whatever. You think you're holier than us, right? (laughs) Because human frustration, anger, does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Now, this is powerful here because I, I don't know about you. But I tend to do the opposite of what James says right here. Somebody says something, and immediately I'm triggered. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Who do you think you are? And I'm I'm, I'm quick to become angry. And you know the first thing I do? Pretty good at speaking up real fast. Some people, now I know this. Look, some people, they just hold it in, and it turns into resentment. I am not one of those people. (laughs) I have no problems with resentment because if you tick me off, you're going to know it in the moment. It's really quite a wonderful trait of mine. But but some people, they just get mad and they hold it in and they think that not speaking it is like, but it's what is, is actually the godly thing to do, but it's actually building anger and resentment, right? But James says, look, there's going to be all sorts of issues that you have in life when you're trying to communicate with people. When you're trying to have a relationship with somebody, your spouse, And you're going to try and communicate what you're feeling, and you're going to try and get them to understand, and it's not going to go the way you think it should. And you're going to end up, if you're honest, getting a little bit frustrated (laughs) or angry about the situation. So I want to talk today a little bit about this this fact that, that most of us, we do the opposite of this. We're not very quick to listen. We're actually pretty quick to speak. Because a lot of us think communication is speaking. But communication, I believe, one of the most important parts of communication is learning the skill of listening. And listen. You get it? Anyway. (laughs) Listening in this loud world we live in of chaos and noise and everybody looking for attention, listening looks a lot like love. When I was 17, I read a book. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Now, that sounds like a very manipulative book, but it's not. If you read the book, it's actually about how to express love to people in a way that when they feel loved by you, they want to come and be in a, in a relationship with you, and, and it just everybody grows, right? One of the chapters in there is about the importance of listening really well. And so when I was 17, I read this book, and I got it really in my head. I want to become a good listener. Now, an interesting response to this that I saw with this was when I was 18, 19, I got my first job, I started really listening. I would look people in the eye. I would listen to everything they're saying. I would ask questions for follow-up. And the craziest things started happening. Women started falling in love with me like crazy. (laughs) I'm not exaggerating. I would have like, I remember I started dating this one girl and a girl came up to me. She's like, how could you do that? She's like, I, I, would, I, I thought we were in love with each other. Like, I felt a real connection with you. And I'm like, what? She's like, you listened that one time? And I'm like, yeah, I listened for an hour, and I realized you're a psycho. Like, <laughs> I don't want to date you. But I started realizing that when you begin to listen to people, they actually, it's an act of love. And sometimes it can actually be misconstrued. I had to learn to stop listening so good. Uh, my wife is, has told me this. She's like, well, you, have you ever noticed how people just tell you their life story on a dime? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what it is. The other day, a couple of weeks ago, I was at H-E-B getting some almond milk. And I just, you know, I got my almond milk. I'm about to check out and turn around. I'm like, how you doing, man? He's like, oh, man, I'm so dreading Christmas and blah, blah. I'm like, oh, you're dreading Christmas? Why is that? And he starts, starts telling me the whole family saga of his sister-in-law and all that. I'm like, 
just trying to buy almond milk here, man. Like, <laughs> and Emily's like, the problem is you ask really good questions and then you listen to what they say and so they keep talking. I'm like, hey, I guess that is true. So sometimes I like have to learn to listen less. But I really am genuinely interested in people because, man, you can learn a lot about people. In fact, I've found this. You can find out some of the most important things about people in about five minutes if you'll just listen to them. If you'll just listen. And, and I believe that listening is a real gift you can give to people in this loud world. Because a lot of times people don't even know what they're feeling because nobody's listening. They don't even know what they're feeling until they say it out loud. And then you become this mirror that reflects back. And you don't even have to say anything. And they just go, oh. Oh, I didn't even realize I was feeling that way because nobody's listening. We're all distracted. Everybody's screaming, yelling, trying to get attention. And listen, I believe listening feels like love because listening is paying attention. And we pay attention to things we love naturally. You don't even have to make an effort at it. If you've got a, a car and it, guys, if you're in love with your car and you just like, as soon as you walk out from the grocery store, you're like, oh, is that a scratch? It, oh, it's just dirt. It's just dirt. Okay. <laughs> Panic attack, right? You know, if you want to know what somebody values, all you got to do is look at what they do, not what they say or think or feel, because we naturally pay attention to the things that are most important to us. And when we begin to pay attention through listening, like really listening, which we're going to talk about in a minute how to do that, uh, it's an act of love in this loud world. In fact, I think it's so close to love that people can't even tell the difference in our world, which is why people will just feel incredibly loved Again. I, didn't, I was not flirting with these girls. I would literally just listen to them. But in their mind, there was this connection that was foreign. I'm like, I'm just listening to you. But it's so foreign in our crazy world. Not crazy. I'm very attractive, Jeremiah. That's what, that's what. <laughs> Jeremiah goes, that's crazy. <laughs> listening is pay attention. So I want to, uh, look, there's this verse that says, the purpose in a man's heart is like a deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. This is a very powerful verse because what it's saying here is every human being, another translation says it's like a deep well. There's a depth to you. There's a depth to every human here. Some people you look at, they're like, they're so superficial. No, they're just superficial. They're just trying to cover over the depth that's in them because they're afraid of the depth. Every one of us is a deep person. We have some emotions below the surface that are there, and sometimes they pop up and you're like, push that down. Guys are like, push that down. We don't, we don't go there, right? There's these deep parts of us. There's things that happened to you in your past that cause you to respond certain ways when things happen. And you get angry and you're like, why am I getting triggered by that? I don't even know what it is. It's because of something that happened in the past maybe. There's deep parts to all of us. And, and oftentimes, those deep parts come up when we're speaking and we're saying things and, and we realize, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that was in there. The, the, Jesus said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If it's in there and it comes out, there's something that you need to pay attention to. So this is a really key in understanding is that when you start paying attention to what people say, you can actually start to get a little better understanding of what's going on deep within them. A person of understanding will draw out what's actually being said here. Because there's sometimes there's things being said, but there's something deeper behind it, what's being said. And sometimes you don't even realize what's deeper. And if you're not really paying attention, you can miss the underlying depth of what's being said. So three, three real quick things I want to talk about. I think there's three elements to good listening. The first one means you pay attention to information. Now, understand this. If you do any of these isolated on their own, not with the other three, you'll just become an irritating person. <laughs> okay? Because here's the thing. I've got some friends that all they listen for is information. They want information so that they can kind of pigeonhole you and go, oh, okay, you fit into this box. Put it in this box over here. I, I, I got this one friend, and I was with him the other day, and I pulled out my toothbrush, and we were doing an overnight thing, and I was brushing my teeth. He's like, wait, you use Crest? And I was like, yeah, I use Crest toothpaste. He's like, dude, I thought you used Colgate. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I used Colgate. Well, last time you said you used Colgate. I was like, well, maybe I did use Colgate last time. He's like, well, which one do you use? I'm like, whatever's cheapest, bro. Like, if it's on sale, I get it. And it was like shocking to him that there was some information that he didn't have. And I don't know, I don't, I don't believe it was so he could manipulate, but I know some people that they use that information so they can manipulate you later. And that's not true listening. That's using listening as a weapon to get material to use against you later. So that's not true listening. 
And listen, okay, then the next, this is the next one, and then we're going to compare the two. The next part of it is you've got to listen for emotions. Now, men, we're real good at this over here. Not so good at this, most of us. And women, you're really good at this. Listen, this is why men's groups and women's groups have to be run very differently. <laughs> I have guys tell me all the time, we can't get a men's group off the ground. I'm like, well, what are you doing? Oh, we get this table together and we all talk about our feelings. I'm like, I ain't showing up at that men's group. <laughs> Like, men need to be doing something, and they like information, so that's why sometimes when you're talking to your spouse, you're like, hey, how'd it go to work today, honey? It was good. We sold this much product, and blah, 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 and this is going to happen. You're like, but what happened? <laughs> and your husband's like, I just told you what happened. When I come home from a trip, my, my outdoor adventure trips, uh, Emily will be like, how was the trip? And I'll be like, good. We did this. We managed to accomplish this amount, seven miles in this many hours, and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, that's not what I wanted. And then about three weeks later, I'll start telling her about some of the relation interactions with the people on the trip. She's like, that's what I wanted. <laughs> but guys, we naturally go to information. Yeah. We're just like, here's what happened. Here's the details, okay? And then this is where miscommunication happens between spouses. Because women, man, y'all can hang out right here, most of you. Now, listen, this is general stereotype, okay? But like in a women's group, man, you can have these things where you like get a table together and just say, start talking about your kids. And the women will just start going, man. And four hours later, you emerge from this cloud of emotion and everybody's happy and feels heard and loved. <laughs> and it's, that's what it's like. But guys, they don't roll that way. So what happens often, and this is why women, you need to have some women friends and you can't count on your spouse to always be this emotional dump. And men, you need to tune up a little bit sometimes and go realize, hey, there's something more my wife's looking for here, and maybe I need to get a little more in tune with my emotions to figure out what's going on here and express it because you're a deep well. And proper listening is a proper balance of information and emotions, and this is the challenge. Because sometimes you'll get in these super emotional conversations, but you need more information because you might find out that per that person's emotions are actually an incorrect view of what's going on. And if you really want to be part of the solution, you need to find out, oh, well, that happened before that. I need some context, need a little information here, or you can just run away train of emotion, right? And then there's also these like really stoic, brutal conversations that like sharing information. This is where men, sometimes you need to get a little more in tune with this and be open enough to share it with some other guys that, yeah, man, we're really struggling in our marriage and I don't know what to do, right? You share some of the emotion that you, you know is there, but you always push it down. And those are the two components that we have to find a balance to it. And so when you're listening, sometimes you need to listen past the information and listen to the emotion. And sometimes you need to listen past the emotion and look for the information. It's got to be in balance. But then here's the third part of it. You also need to pay attention to your own response to what's being said and what's happening. And this is super important because I can't tell you, you know, when I got that cancer, uh, cancer diagnosis last year, the melanoma, it was fascinating to me how many people I would tell the news and it immediately became about them. And I know what was happening because I'm watching, I'm paying attention to their response. The news is so shocking to them that their first thought is, what if that were to happen to me? And so they start defending, you know, sometimes they'll blame you and they'll be like, well, what did you do to cause that? Like, were you out in the sun too much? And they're like, maybe. And, but I'm like, wait, this isn't about you. But what happens is sometimes it's so jolting something we share that people begin to make it about them and because they're not paying attention to how it's making them feel. Well, what if I get that, right? And then maybe they'll start telling you about, well, you just need to have faith in God and you know, God would never allow this. And you're like, shut up, just listen to me. But it's amazing how many times people will make your suffering about them because they're not paying attention really listening. All they heard was the information. It jolted them, and they weren't away, willing to put, them, put their own feelings aside for a while and pay attention to how the conversation was making them feel. And this is just as important. And sometimes you need to be honest to say, wow, I'm going to be really honest. This conversation is making me feel uncomfortable. It's better that than to tune them out. And this is the real challenge with all of this is we live in a world right now where you can get away with some of this and think you're thinking, like think you're actually listening, but you're not. Because, for example, my wife can be telling me information about her day, and I'm on my phone, and I can repeat back everything she just said to me. Yeah, sweetheart, I heard you say that. Yeah, she's like, you didn't listen to me. Elise is my daughter, Elise. She's seven years old. She's brutal, man. She's like, you're not listening, Dad. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm listening. But you know what I was listening for? Information. I wasn't looking at her in the eye, wasn't paying attention to any emotions, 
I was zoned out. And that's when you become annoying, when you only use one of these three traits. And distraction is so, I mean, that's the problem is why people, attention feels like love is because so many of us are so distracted in so many ways. And you need to designate some real focus time for listening. And whenever you're in a conflict with somebody, here, here's a really key point. Before you speak, make sure that you have fully listened. That's what James says. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. And how do you know you fully listen? There's a guy named Carl Rogers. He was a counselor. And he implemented this thing. He said when, when two people are having a conversation, before another person can step in and say they're, they're part of it, they have to let the person complete their thought. And then they have to say this line. And this is a powerful line right here. What I hear you saying is, and they can't say their response to what the person said until that person says, yes, the way you just repeated what I said is exactly what I was saying. But what will happen is what I hear you saying is this. And you're like, that's not what I was saying at all. And that's how you start to avoid miscommunication. You're in a conflict with your spouse about how to handle something with the kids and your spouse is sharing all this stuff. And maybe your, your husband, your husband, and you're listening to your wife, and she's getting all emotional, and you're getting stressed by the emotions of it. And you're like, uh, uh, uh. But calm yourself down. Pay attention to how it's making you feel. You can even say that. Say, man, the intensity of this conversation is really stressing me out right now, but I'm going to keep listening. I'm going to keep listening. And then when they're done, you say, so what I hear you saying is this. And until your spouse says, that is what I'm saying, you don't get to say anything. And listen, there may be something that your spouse is feeling that's wrong. You say, well, that's not even accurate in, in, in line with reality. But they're never going to be open to listening to you bring truth and drop the truth bomb if they don't feel listened to first. And this is a challenge we face in our world. Christians, man, we are so known for speaking up for truth and what we believe and standing up for what's right. And all them pagans out there doing their pagan stuff, they, don't they know? Fact is, they don't know. But you know what can open the door is just listening to them. Everything everybody does makes sense to them. That's really important to understand. All the weird stuff your spouse does makes sense to them. All the weird stuff your son or daughter does makes sense to them. We all do stuff that makes sense to us. Now, our sense may be off. Our sense of reality may be off. But until we're able to really listen to someone and let them express what they're feeling, because a lot of times, man, this is what they say when I was doing uh, counseling with trauma, trauma patients. Sometimes this trauma had happened a year or two years ago, and when they talk, it's just a disjointed, jumbled mess. And you could tell they've been through a traumatic situation when it's just this disjointed, jumbled mess. And one of the most powerful things you could do is just listen to them tell the story. And as they told the story over and over again, they were able to put the pieces together and be like, and this happened, and that happened. And sometimes they'd ask a clarifying question and be like, well, did that happen before this? And as they piece it together, the story becomes more, more coherent. And as they piece it together, they start to find a little bit more meaning in it. That's kind of what this next series we're going to be doing about is connecting the dots, is finding meaning in these chaotic things that have happened in our past. But the key is you can be the most loving person just by doing this. Focus and listen. And then when they've said their piece, even if you don't like what they're saying or agree with what they're saying, go, so what I hear you saying is, and then make sure that they're in agreement with what, that you heard correctly. And then that opens the door, man. It's amazing how quickly that opens the door. When somebody feels heard, understood, seen, it's amazing what they'll listen to, but it, they'll listen for only after you've listened first. But it starts with this, so what I hear you saying is, it's my encouragement for you this week. And when you find yourself with your boss pushing you to do stuff, you're like, that's just impossible. Ask the question, hey, so what's the goal here? You know, why, why, what, you know, why are you pushing so hard on this? And when they ask, you say, so what I hear you saying is this. With your spouse, so what I hear you saying is this. And then don't say anything until they feel listened to completely. And you'll be amazed how it'll transform things. And I don't get this right all the time. In fact, I get it wrong probably most of the time. Because men and women, we're so different. Like with my spouse, with Emily, it's so hard sometimes. She's an emotional wreck. I'm just kidding. She's not. She's not. But, but it's just, it's so opposite of how guys processing. We're information. Women are emotion. Most, you know, in general. Sometimes that role is, is swapped. But man, when, when, when she feels listened to, and when I feel listened to, there's just, man, you feel invincible, don't you? You feel like somebody understands me. 
And that opens the door for, for grace and for love. And I really, I really do believe what this world needs right now is people who are willing to show love through listening rather than speaking. Even if what, you, what they're doing, you know it's wrong. Don't speak before you first listen to what they're saying. You guys receive that? Yeah. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you gave us two ears and one mouth for one reason. <laughs> Double the listening, half the speaking. I pray for those this morning that are, man, they're in a relational struggle right now with their son, with their daughter, with their husband, with their wife. They, just, they feel like they're at the end of the rope. There's no way they can pull themselves out of this. Lord, I pray that you would come in. And first of all, you give them the power and the grace to do what they can't do on their own. Just help us to learn to listen. And I pray that as we listen to one another, as we share what's going on in our lives, and then we communicate back, hey, I understand. Here's what I hear you saying. I pray, Lord, you just open the, that would just open the door to your grace to come into situations, situations that seem irreconcilable. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give us the power uh, to, to open the door for your spirit to bring reconciliation, healing of those relationships. If you're here this morning and you do not have your relationship right with Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity in just a second. You already know who you are as I've been talking. You know who you are. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get that relationship right. We're going to say a prayer. If you say this prayer and mean it with your whole heart, Jesus is going to come. He's going to forgive you of your, all your sins, take away your unrighteousness, and give you an eternal address with him in eternity. It starts by saying this prayer. Let's say it all together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources back here at the table to help you along your way. Man, I pray that this week you guys can stand. I pray you guys this week you will be listeners first. Listeners first. Hey, next week, we're starting the series Connecting the Dots. I'm telling you, this is a great series to invite your friends to, okay? So if you've been waiting for an opportunity to invite somebody to church, go invite somebody next week. We will see you here. Be blessed. Have a great week. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.